Yeah, I need to like people like you. I need to get <laughs> If you buy into it, obviously it's colour. So clearly it's cheaper for those people to get. Well, we're here today at CD Sunday, which is an amazing event because um, it's encouraging people to come from all over Eastbourne and even further to bring their seeds to swap with people. And the foundation, that is the foundation of, of um, growing food, of people becoming more resilient. And um, my sense is that Eastbourne is already in transition. And although we speak of the transition movement, um, it's already happening. The town is waking up, people are out there just doing stuff. There's all kinds of community um, experiences going on from um, a community orchard planned in an allotment to a community orchard gardens to gardens that have been created using the homeless and the um, alcoholics and people like that, giving them a sense of pride. There's, there's an enormous amount of stuff, people going around sprucing up shops in Eastbourne. Um, and that is really a transition. So this transition movement that started in Totnes was the idea of making towns more resilient and more self-contained and building community spirit in a time when we've got an economic depression and chaos, when we have um, peak oil where the oil supply is running out, we can't continue to take fossil fuels out of the ground, and where we also have a very precarious climate, as we can see today, because I was going to cycle here and I had to come by taxi because the wind was so tempestuous and unchanging. So it's important that people learn to, um, to start doing stuff that's going to build their own resilience rather than waiting for the government to do it. And once we do get off our backsides and start working on stuff, then what happens is that the council are very willing to support us. Now, um, the guy who started the idea of the transition movement, which is again about communities becoming more resilient, um, he was a permaculture teacher. And permaculture is something that really underpins transition. Transition um, is about creating change, but it's about a lot more. It's about using resources more wisely. It's about being more frugal. It's about generating all kinds of unique creative ideas. Permaculture is a design system for holistic living that takes into account every aspect of our lives so that we design our lives so that it's in a flow, that it works with nature, not against it, where um, we care for humans, care for the earth, and we get a yield, uh, a blooming good yield, and we share it with other people. And um, the way that the, the, the food is grown, the way that we use resources like saving water, um, making things from old discarded wood, um, growing stuff together so that it actually have, works with each other, we don't have to use pesticides and chemicals. Um, there are a million things in permaculture, but really it's important to look at the um, it's 12 principles, and um, they are really the underpinning of the transition movement. For example, make no waste is one of them. Um, observe and interact so that when you're in um, a situation and you want to, to do something with it, you watch what's going on already. You check the traffic flow of the people. You check how they live their lives, you know, what they do every day. Um, so that everything is integrated. Um, so permaculture is a huge subject and I suggest that if you're really interested in it, you can Google permaculture, P-E-R-M-A-C-U-L-T-U-R-E, -E, from, um, from Google it and find out loads about it. There's a big movement here in the UK. So we're incorporating the idea of transitioning permaculture and our aim is to join up all the wonderful groups of people who are doing stuff all over Eastbourne to show that people who don't really know that anything can be done or just like afraid to start something thinking they'll be the first, that there are loads of people just doing it and um, there's loads of examples and ideas and everything that can really help you to get together with your neighbours and do something really wonderful for your own security, for your own resilience and to build community spirit. Hello, I'm David and I work for the Sussex Wildlife Trust and Jane here is a volunteer for the Sussex Wildlife Trust and we recruit for them uh, because they rely on the membership funds to keep the good work going. Jane's going to tell you a little bit about um, the local stuff that's going on in, in, with the Sussex Wildlife Trust, so over to you Jane. Hi, yeah. Well, Eastbourne is wonderful because we have the Seven Sisters, we have that wonderful uh, South Downs um, and we've got a very, very active regional group as well. So we're extremely lucky in Eastbourne here. Um, also, we have, throughout Sussex, we have over 30 reserves. Um, but right on our doorsteps, we've got the Peven Pevensey Levels, which has uh, marsh harriers and the, a very rare raft spider, <laughs> it's very large <laughs> raft spider. And in fact, the, the habitat on the Pevensey Levels 
uh, reserve is so fragile that we actually only open it once a year and to members only, um, mostly because of the nesting site, because it's a nesting site for the marsh harrier. Um, we're also very lucky to have right on our doorstep the Seven Sisters uh, Educational Centre that the Sussex Wildlife Trust run and we have lots and lots of events there for children and also for adults and run all kinds of courses for both children and adults so we're extremely lucky and it's a very very active um, Sussex Wildlife Trust regional group. Uh, the regional group, if you'd like to get involved, meets usually once a month in Eldon Road at Victoria Baptist Church. But you can also look online and find details of the group uh, on the Sussex Wildlife Trust website. Um, and this, this lady, I believe, has been visited the talks. Have you done any Oh yes, I attend as many of the walks as I possibly can, albeit I work full time. I find they're very well attended. There are people um, who have very different interests, such as botany and uh, bird watching, and we all come together and we share our interests and knowledge and, and just have a very enjoyable walk together. And also I would highly recommend the, the monthly talks um, that Jane mentioned here, uh, which are always very well received. They have excellent speakers with um, good specialist knowledge on a, a wide range of subjects, not necessarily Sussex-based, although they often are. They could be, uh, even have an international flavour and there are also um, a good social events um, and many people attend um, so it's a very good place to, to possibly make, make new friends and contacts and share information on a range of subjects I would highly recommend uh, joining the, the local group Hi I'm Susie, this is my husband Martin we've got a wildlife garden in Eastbourne it's just our private garden but um, it's mainly um, based on green theories for wildlife. So that all kind of goes together, like helping wildlife, um, the therapeutic um, qualities of nature, how it helps us, so kind of calming qualities, uh, relaxation benefits, that kind of thing. But also mainly helping wildlife, so the plants help feed the caterpillars of the insects. The more, the more insects that are around, the more the birds and the big animals come in to feed off those. So the more wildflowers you've got, the more wildlife the garden brings. And in, in 2011, when we started the garden, our first project was to build a wildlife pond. And now we've got dragonflies, damselflies, frogs, newts, all sorts of... Um, it's just an incredible place just to sit and watch, because so much goes on in that world. Um, it's just been marvellous, and it's really good for us. Yes, the seed swap, um, Seedy Sunday today, great. Um, it's all about biodiversity and permaculture. You know, come and save your seeds. And it's just easy, just to save your seeds from the garden. It's, it's fantastic. And it's so easy to do, really easy to, to do. And we really want more people to get involved with this. This is our, our second year, and um, next year's going to be our third year. And we can only grow from this and just get loads of people involved. Um, to save seeds, it's just the easiest thing in the world. Right, hello, I'm Fiona Derling from the Eastbourne Transition Group. Uh, we've started up over the last few months to promote the idea of transition, which is about communities looking at what's needed to improve their environment and sustainability. Lewis has had a transition group going for about 10 years and they've done lots of initiatives with community food, growing and energy. Uh, we've just started that off. Our first project is involved with uh, looking at community food growing and using spaces um, around the town. Um, we have uh, a community food growing project at what, um, the Winchcombe and Dursley Community Garden with local residents involved. So we're helping them actually to develop and to plant fruit trees um, and um, soft fruit gooseberry bushes and vegetable patches. Uh, and we're trying to encourage everybody throughout the town to find a little space, doesn't matter if it's only 10 foot square, where um, fruit and vegetables and flowers can be planted and looked after by the local community. Uh, as part of our um, community orchards group, um, we're raising awareness about uh, English apples uh, and local apples. There's just a little collection here of uh, the tra 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 traditional apple varieties from the last hundred years or so. 
uh, for instance, we've got here, um, we've got uh, a Roman apple, which is called Court Penview Plat. Uh, that was introduced in Roman times. Uh, it's an unusual apple. It's fairly hard, but you have to wait until February till it's ready to eat. And it's about knowing your apples. Uh, we've got some of them which um, will only be read, uh, ready sort of uh, in um, August time. Um, and you've got to eat them then, and then their season will have gone over. Uh, and others, that if you pick them in August, they'd be way too hard um, and they'd be spoiled. So it's just a little bit of knowledge of when to eat the local varieties. And some of them will like chalky, chalky soil, so they're best to be best in this part of Eastbourne. Others will like clay soil, like the Wadhurst Pippin, which is a Sussex apple. Uh, and also Crawley Beauty is another Sussex apple. And we also have our own Eastbourne Pippin, which we haven't got an example of, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, there are some trees being grafted, so hopefully we'll get, be able to get hold of some of those trees to plant in community gardens throughout Eastbourne. Um, Eastbourne Pippin uh, was developed in the 1920s, uh, and we're actually asking people if they know if there, there is a specimen in Eastbourne, if they know anything about uh, the history of the apple, to let us know uh, for it promoting local distinctiveness. This is the Sussex Apples and Orchards book which was produced last year uh, by a working group with Brighton Permaculture and um, the Sussex Royal Community Council. They've actually propagated lots of Sussex apples which are now planted in a lot of primary schools around the county um, and a lot of people aren't, don't know about the Sussex apples. Uh, they were developed in the area for specific purposes um, and um, they give a, a lot of diversity, uh, a lot of different flavours because in the supermarket you'll only find um, uh, three or four different varieties that look absolutely perfect but they won't have the flavour that you'll find in the old varieties. So it's just having a little bit of knowledge to be aware of um, how much interest there is in the old varieties of apples that you will find in old gardens uh, and even in odd spots um, along railway lines where people have thrown out an apple and pips grown up. Um, and if you look around you can find a lot of interesting sorts of fruit uh, in the community.